And so there were like 20 guys around this one PC, you know, like, oh, let's go to look at this. Let's look at that. Um, and like the page would load up really slowly. <laughs> um, I was doing a play at King Street Theatre and I was working with this amazing actress who was there. She came in about two weeks before we were going to open. The actress that we had cast had just left and she, she was doing a paid show so it was like bye bye mm. you know so this other actress came in and she was superb and so at the time when i was doing a deconstruction of the script and everything i would write in every blank space around the script what the character was thinking what, what he was feeling where to stand how to say the words um where to turn everything i would just fill every blank space of the script on every single page kind of and, character breakdown character breakdown yeah and this was a complete separation of everything that I'd known instinctively beforehand. But this was all due to what I was taught by my drama teachers up to that point. And then one night we're performing a show and she was hovering around in the, in the wings and I was kind of sitting on a chair waiting for my scene to come up and her scene was up before mine. So she was hovering in the wings and then she looked at a script and then she was kind of looked at the script again, flipped a few pages... Okay, and then she walked to the door and then she walked in and did a scene. <clears throat> so I got up out of my chair and I was like going for a little walk around the wings as well. And then I walked up to a script and the script was blank. The only marking that she had on the script were the highlighted lines, her lines, and the word beat, where the beat changes in the script were. That was it. And I was like, my oh God. my God, she is so amazing. How is it that she... I was, I was there was like, nothing oh God, there, yeah. There was nothing there. <clears throat> so I went around the, the, the outside of the wings. I went around where the audience seating was. And I sat in the side and I watched her performance. And from every night, I watched, her, I watched every time that she was on. I would just and just analyze and study her performance. And she was in the moment. She was not, she was not even, like nothing was set in stone. She was just present within the moment. Night after night after night after night. And I'd drive home every night and I'd kind of just sit there thinking, how did she do that moment? How did she do this moment? Oh, that moment where she was laughing there. And, and you know, and then, then the, our, our scenes together, I, I kept thinking, and I was just, I was just like, how, how? And then at the end, um, I thought, it must be, she just must just trust herself. Because I couldn't, I couldn't come to a satisfactory conclusion about it. So I thought, okay, the next play I'm going to do I'm not going to write anything on my script. I'm just going to highlight my lines and that's it. And I did that. And I was doing a play called The Last Night of Ballyhoo, uh, written by Alfred Urey. It's a very famous play. And um, I was playing a character called Joe Farkas, <coughs> who's like this Jewish outsider, starting his own business type, type person. And I, so I went in and I did the character and, and rehearsals and everything. I was, I was struggling to not write anything on the script. But I, I, I did it. I went through straight, straight through the performance. Every night I tried something new. Every night I was tr just trying to listen to what the characters were saying to me, sen sensing how I responded to the character and just trusting myself, trusting the moment. And I walked away from that performance going, I have done this character in every which way I could have possibly thought of and there's nothing else I could have done. Because sometimes I walk away from a performance or a, a film shoot and I go, oh man, I could have done the character like this or could have performed it like that. But with this play, I was like, no, no, I'm completely satisfied. I performed it in every single way, every possible machination of that character possible. And I was so, I was so overjoyed. I've actually quite learned a lot from you today, just, just knowing because I'm quite inexperienced, but... Mm. It's it's lovely hearing that. No it's worries, amazing. No. I Thanks, love it. It's amazing. <laughs> and it was quite an interesting dynamic listening to both of you as well because you were coming in from the actor's perspective yeah. and he was putting on his producer's head about like, you know, story and character and how yeah. they connected rather than I guess thinking about the emotional yeah. complexity and the layers of it. Yeah. Whereas you came in from that character's point mm, of view yeah. as well. I think one of the one of the greatest lessons I've ever learned from this industry is that you keep learning. You, you never stop learning about anything. And whether you're just starting out, whether you have the experience, it's, it's, it's incredibly important because if you, in, in, 
for every person that you meet, they are superior to you in some way, shape or form. And they, they have something to teach you. And that, that level of just constantly learning and just being humble about it and just, it's just saying, no, I, there's something I can take away from this. There's a positive to this. No matter how... Uh, no, no matter how negative something may feel, you know, you may turn up on set and it's, it's just like a really bad shoot. You know, people are in just poor spirits and... You know, it happens sometimes. It happens, but it's it's again like never hold a grudge against people. It's just it's just some people have their on and off days. But by the same token, everyone has something to give and offer to someone else. And I think this is the thing. It's 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 about coming in with fresh eyes and and learning constantly. Gratitude is another thing that's really important to express in the, in the industry. Um, Again, it was like it was like you know in my twenties. I just I was like, oh, thank you, thank you. But it wasn't it wasn't a grateful, you know, for being here. Sort of mm. thank you. You know, it was more just ticking a box. Um, so that was yeah. It was one of those things where I was able to kind of reflect back and say, oh shit, like I've gotten this far because of this individual or these individuals, uh, not just my drama teachers, but the directors I worked with, the actors I've worked with, you know, that's, I wouldn't be where I am. You know, I've had amazing mentors. I had one mentor who was just uh, Peter Feeney. He's a New Zealand actor. Um, and he hates me calling him a mentor, but he was. He's like, Peter, you are. Um, he kept me on the straight and narrow at the very start. And he was able, someone who really guided me um, on a path that really, was productive because um, he, he's quite a pragmatist in his in his approach to things and he, he kind of took me under his wing and was able to kind of fill me in on the details that you just never learn from drama school you never learn from other actors or directors or casting directors or whoever you know you it's it's just someone who kind of just went there's something about you and I'm going to take you under my wing and he just did it and it was it was quite very very selfless of him to do that and eternally grateful to him for, for just keeping me on the straight and narrow in that path. One of my favourite places in school was the library. I would always go up to the library at lunchtime and just read and find whatever they had. It was like a treasure trove. It's no different to going online and, you know, going on a YouTube spiral and, you know, finding mm. out what, what you get to I, after three hours. I don't worry, I know. <clears throat> I know how you feel. Huh? So it was, it was kind of like that. It's, it's a very similar sort of experience. My first uh, well, computer-based sort of machine was an Atari 2600. or I was about six at the time. And my parents were over... The, we all... Our whole family went over to this uh, person's place to buy this console of them. And I just remember being glued to the TV... And they were playing Space Invaders and they were playing Pong and, and Pac-Man and all that. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? And so so we, we bought it we, and we brought it home and everything. And um, I, I was just addicted to it. There was a particular game called Demon Attack, which I absolutely loved. And it was like, it kind of like Space Invaders, but it had these like bats that fly above. And when you shoot them, they split in two and then it starts raining down you know, firepower and stuff on me. And I'd always play it before school and mum mum would be like, Clay, get off the Atari. No, mum, mum, I'm I'm nearly done. I'm nearly done. She's like, Clay, the game doesn't have an ending. Come on. You know, because it was just a continuous, like Tetris, you know. And then my next console after that was a Sega Master System. So I had like Sonic and Alex Kidd and Wonder Boy and all that. And... Um, my friends had a Commodore 64, so we'd, I'd always go over there, play Last Ninja and Summer Games and all those sorts of video games. And then we got a computer, the 386SX, and it was like MS-DOS and everything else. And I, I learnt computers from a next-door neighbour who had similar sort of computers in that respect. And um, I was just really into it. I loved, I loved just the configurability of, of, a, of a computer, like what you could do with it. it. It wasn't just for games. You could type up your assignments on it. You could, you know, you could work out a spreadsheet to figure out your monthly budget and stuff. Like there was just so much you could do with a computer at that time. And then in high school, um, 
I think it was about eighth or ninth grade is when they started to bring the internet in. And it was like a 56K connection mm-hmm. on the modem. And I remember like the squeals it would make, you know, as, as the, uh, as it's logging in and one of the, one of the guys there, he was like super into it and he's like, oh, so there's this site called, um, Google that you go to and you, um, you look it up, look up whatever you want to look up and it'll bring up the page for you and everything else. And, um, and they had the other sites like GeoCities and, um, Ask, Ask Jeeves and all like really old sort of website. We were using like Netscape Navigator um, in those days, but we only had like that hour lunch break. And so there were like 20 guys around this one <laughs> PC, you know, like, oh, let's go to look at this. Let's look at that. Um, and like the page would load up really slowly <laughs> and things like that. But it was like such an incredible thing and we never, we never, even at the time, we never even conceived how quickly or how fast um, the internet would be. Nowadays. The quality, like, the, of the video and everything else. Like, even when, <clears throat> like, the library, the school library bought in, like, Microsoft and Carter. I don't know if, know if you guys remember that. It was a multimedia CD, and it was like, it was like an encyclopedia on, on CD, but it had video and pictures and everything else and even the terrible quality of the of the pictures and the video was still amazing to our eyes you know um and it's just i mean nowadays you look at something like minecraft for example um like that is the atari for today's kids so what is going to come in the future is just 20, gonna... like it's just going to blow our minds and and this is the thing like i remember being my next door neighbor, he, he had like tape drives. He had a five gigabyte tape. This is like 1990. I'd never heard of a gigabyte before. And he said, he said, oh, this is a five gigabyte duct tape. I was like, five, I said, how much is that? And he, he told me, and I was like, oh my God. And I only had like a 40 megabyte hard drive. I'm like, oh my oh, God, that. all that information on, oh, I'm looking at this little tape, it's tiny. I was like, all that information on this tape. He said, yeah, but it takes a long time to read the data and find it and everything else. But I was like, still five gigabytes. Yeah. You know, it was like, <laughs> my mind is just exploding at the, just the prospect of something that enormous, you know? So yeah. And <clears throat> even, even like, like nowadays having the internet, you have a wide variety of opinion. You have a wide variety of different ideologies and and uh, viewpoints and everything else available at your fingertips, as opposed to pre-internet where it was just TV or newspaper or books, and it was a particular way of viewing the world. And it was like going from that to this new sort of era was just it's such a huge change for for someone who was just still growing up in that time and. Yeah, just just having to, yeah, just readjust ourselves to that brave new world that was kind of at our fingertips, you know. Which I think you- even now, like when I when I <clears throat> when I go on YouTube and and I can actually click on four K or eight K even it, yeah. like resolution, yeah. it just blows my mind to even be able to look at it yeah. that clearly as if I'm looking at it with my own eyes. Yeah, it, it's just incredible. Sometimes I even like wonder, <clears throat> like. Um, because I think uh, during my time, I yeah. had more of the... Um, I was the PS1, PS2 era. Yeah. Where um, I also had the 40 megabyte um, memory card yeah. and you could slot it into the PlayStation 2. Yeah. And that thing would be like... That would that would blow my mind. That, w- that was something else where nothing would be able to touch it. Yeah. I-, I would play PlayStation yeah. more than 12 hours a day. <laughs> that was... That was my life, pretty yeah. much. Even nowadays, I'm not going to talk about it for too long, but yeah, yeah. I still play far too much games. And yeah. and it's still, the capacity it's it's become, even from the PS2 days, yeah. is just immense. Yeah. It's immense to see what we, what the world has become. Oh, totally. And, and I, I agree, with, with the internet, I think it's, it, it's brought around a, a sense of, uh, uh, is it a, the word opinion is it opinion or is it 
diversity of mm. opinions. Yeah. And, and I think that's changed the world a lot as well because yeah. now people are, are more open to seeing this kind of opinion yeah. and like people's opinions on things. And, and it's quite... I, I'm thankful. I'm yeah. very thankful that we've that we've brought this out because mm. th- there was there's no more narrow mindedness yeah. to to a certain thing. You you're not having to have a certain camera for this kind of thing. Yeah. You can have this person saying this camera is uh, better for this kind of video. Yeah. This camera is better. It, it it really brings out a different perspective on everyone's lives, and I think that's really helped me especially mm. because it's. It, it's brought out into my eyes because I've started also in a um, very computer-generated field. I started yeah. um, studying computer science and I didn't think it was for me. So I mm. changed my field into film. Yeah. But that's only because I saw what it's brought out into other people. Yeah. And I think, obviously, it's brought out the same into you as well. Yeah, I think c- computer literacy is just part and parcel to the age that we live in nowadays. Mm. And, I, and, like, and like you said, it's... Um, because of the differing opinions, it, it's brought out the good and the bad, mm. uh, dependent on what your perspective of yeah, life of is, course, obviously. Yeah. It's not, there isn't an objective uh, view of what bad is per se. Um, there is what the majority thinks and feels, yeah. and then there's a minority of what they think and feel yeah, as well. Um, so it's, but what that's given uh, birth to is this sort of, this openness in, in the world mm. of, how one wants to, how they want to direct their life and how they want to go ahead in the world. And I think that's quite good because it, it makes us more informed, um, especially in contrast to, like if uh, someone, I was reading an article by an anthropologist who was talking about uh, people at the turn of the 20th century, um, how the concepts of abstraction were just not something that they could conceive at the time. So if you if you were to talk about um, things like philosophy or or psychology or anything like subjects that require you to be able to pull apart, you know, motivations of people or why this political system is is the way it is or you know like the, like the rise of uh, communist socialism or the Nazism, like people weren't informed enough. On an, on an abstractive thought sort of processing level to go, oh, wait, that's actually a bad thing because we have that nowadays. Mm. We're a lot more informed. Whereas back then, they were a lot more easier to be swayed into different persuasions mm. of that of that ilk. I mean, even you go back to even how religion has like over thousands of years has been this sort of dominant force within humanity. And it's something that, if, if if someone who had the the ability of abstract thought from the 20, 21st century were able to come back to that period, they would they would have full command of how the people would be ruled because they have an understanding of like human psychology, um, different ideologies, political ideologies in which to rile people up, how to get them on your side, how to uh, motivate people to do things that they would never have even conceived of, of doing. Our way of thinking has, has evolved in, in exponentially over the last 20th century. And now as we go into the 21st century, it's, it's going to evolve even more. So it's going to be fascinating to see how much that, that is offset over the years and how much we take on board and how much we leave behind so i mean you see it nowadays you know just how people's thoughts and opinions about what happened 10 20 years ago like in terms of like news how news was reported representation of people on screen nowadays um uh, views towards lgbt you know so on and so forth it's it's all evolved and it's changed and it's growing and it's and it's going to keep on moving it's going to be something that's going to constantly flow and thanks for watching today's episode of The Convo Couch. Again, I'm San. I'm Baz. And thanks to Clay for coming on. No worries. Thanks for having me, guys. My pleasure. Don't forget to check out the links below to Clay's profile and subscribe too. See you next time.